In the previous Vapor Trails episode, we had an early start as we headed up into the mountains in search of mountain reedbuck, and we spent most of the morning sitting on the hillside, glassing for movement across the valley. We didn't have much luck in the morning session, so we headed down into the kloof, we made a fire in the donga, and we cooked up some sausages for lunch, taking some time to relax and enjoy the good weather. Things began to happen in the afternoon session as both myself and Hein managed to each shoot a nice mountain reedbuck ram, but we still had a good few hours of sunlight and in this episode we're going to carry on where we left off. With a number of nice fallow deer stags spotted in a particular valley over the past few days, we decided to set up an ambush in the hope that one of them might walk out into the open and present us with a shot. The wind is blowing quite strongly now but we managed to find a nice flat outcrop overlooking the valley that allows us to set up fairly comfortably in a prone position and also allows us to see the whole valley below. So with a good spot found the setup begins and this proved to be quite tricky. Sitting down is one thing, but when you want to get comfortable in a prone position, you have to be aware of what you're lying on. So quite a few rocks, sticks and cactus sparks were moved out the way, and with your hands rifle set up nicely, all we had to do was wait. Okay, operation kloof extermination may proceed. We sit still for a good half an hour or so, ranging all the spots where we think the fallow deer might come out, and making mental notes of what we might need to adjust for. And while we wait, I take the opportunity to set up my rifle as well. Your hands got priority on this shot, but I like to be prepared just in case a second animal appears. Rian suddenly spots three warthogs feeding on the other side of the valley, and all of a sudden our plans change. A trophy fellow stag would be nice, but these warthogs are a big problem here, and so they take priority. Okay, I'm gonna count one, two, three, okay. One, two, three, and then we shoot on zero, basically. Okay. I'm gonna say zero and you shoot, don't you say anything. Okay. When yokes are ready, say. Okay. okay, I'm ready. Three, two, one. <laughs> two dead pigs. Other two one standing dead, dead up one. to the left. Take it. Pig is taking a tumble. That other one's wounded coming down. The left hand pig, so there it's done. Done. Three pigs. <laughs> Sorry, man. Three dead pigs. Three dead pigs. And that is called teamwork. <laughs> <laughs> Three, two, one, zero. I mean, I've tried this kind of tactic before and I, it, always, it never ends well because you. I don't know, when I'm forced to take a shot at a specific time, I sometimes pull it. But, I mean, I just thought through the scope, two pigs dead in their tracks. So, I could not be happier. What is the distance again? Let's see, 339 meters. In the wind, um, I said 15 mile per hour wind, slightly from the left, I, I dialed 0.4 mils. So obviously the bullet would have drifted in a little bit. Um, yeah. That's how it's done. <laughs> well done. <laughs> the story there as well is that we were, we, were, we were wanting to shoot a fellow deer. Um, so we were set up here nicely, but the, the pigs take priority because the pigs are, are pest animals here. They break through fences, they just a general nuisance. So um, we kind of aborted on the, on the fellow deer side of things and, and um, did what the farmer wanted us to do, um, which is also something that's important to remember. Um, you've got to do what's best for I suppose the whole management of the farm and not just for your own interests um, but the way that worked out I think I would be just as stoked to see that than to shoot a decent fellow deer so I'm really happy. It was quite a challenging retrieval but we managed to get all three warthogs down the valley and are able to end the day with big smiles on our faces. Right well that's 
three pigs to end the day and the way it happened was absolutely fantastic. We were up on the rocks looking for a fallow deer. It could have been a perfect setup for the fallow deer because we were up on a high vantage point. If the deer came up or even on the other side of the valley, we, we were in range and we could have taken a shot. Um, but then we saw um, these pigs up on the other side and um, the pigs are our pr priority here because they are problem animals. They do break through fences and cause all kind of problems. So we kind of turned our, our attention towards them. And because they were so relaxed, we had we actually had time to set up both of our rifles, you know, measure the wind, um, range them, get comfortable, and we were counted down three, two, one, pulled the trigger, and both of them, these two dropped same time on the spot, perfect shots. And then third one, just off to the side, I was able to reload and take the shot, and that one went down as well. So it's really, really special. It's not often you get an opportunity to do something like that. So I'm really happy with that. Um, so this meat is going to be taken to cold room and we'll definitely make use of it and um, special thanks to Rion who counted us down so well <laughs> it really enabled us to to do what we needed to do and do it well so that's a great way to end the day in the next episode we will be ending off a fantastic hunting trip by taking the ladies out to shoot some springbuck the girls may not be as fanatical as the guys when it comes to shooting but when the time comes to pull the trigger they prove that they can certainly get the job done This was quite a short one, but once again, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next episode.